Second Timothy as well, but we'll see. Lord, have your way. Father, speak to our hearts through your word. Minister to us. And I pray, Father, that your anointing would flow into hearts and lives, Father, that we would hear your word and trust in you and have faith in you for every situation. We just thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. So Psalm 91. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Um, and uh, it's just a powerful scripture where David is um, David is praying over his people. It says in verse... <coughs> Excuse me. It says in verse 1, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare, And from the deadly pestilence, he will cover you with his feathers. And under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror that flies at night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Amen. I want to talk to you about this spirit of fear. I I just, um, I got to tell you, I, I could see it. It was like it was everywhere yesterday. I, I I just was walking through Walmart. I went to pick up a few things, and I did get a few essentials. And uh, as I'm going through and I look, and I just begin to see bare aisles. I mean, like, just, it's gone. You know, staples, flour, sugar. Like, I mean, something has gone on. And it's like Walmart's half stocked and it's all the things that you would think that you would want to pick up today and so what was going on and it was very it was very strange to me as I was uh, going through the store and I was looking for different things and picking up a few things that we needed I wanted to make some chicken soup my wife wasn't feeling super good and uh, we were going through the store It, it, it was like it was like a, a, that spirit of fear had, had brought just a sense of confusion upon everybody that was around. It was like, I know I'm here because I need something. I, I, I need something. I know I need something. And this is where you get stuff. You get stuff at Walmart. You know, I mean, who doesn't get something at Walmart every week? But the reality is Walmart doesn't have what we need for this situation. Walmart is completely sold out of faith, hope, and love. Walmart is completely sold out of refuge and shelter. (laughs) They are sold out of provision for our needs. But you know who isn't sold out? Who never, ever runs dry? Who never, ever is lacking what we need? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And in this, 
In this scripture, it talks about how we can come under the shelter of his wings. It, it paints this beautiful picture of God as this, as this big mama bird. You know, protecting his little ones. And in the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme of all that goes on in the world, we feel very small. Oftentimes we feel very, very small. And, and things hit us. Uh, we see wars and we see rumors of wars and we see uh, 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 earthquakes and, and famines and we see hurricanes come through and destroy and we feel utterly powerless, utterly, utterly uh, unable to manage that which we can see. But the unseen God covers us, hovers over us, protects us when we cry out to him. He has our provision. He has what we need. His shelves never run empty. And in the Father's house, there's always toilet paper. <laughs> it was funny. We, I was there yesterday, and uh, there's this, they were, they, everybody knows there's this massive uh, toilet paper shortage. And I was, uh, I was scrolling through Facebook yesterday. I mean, you couldn't believe how many toilet paper memes they have produced in just a couple of weeks. It's just amazing. Uh, and, and some of them are really funny. But uh, I, I, was, I was watching, and they were completely sold out of toilet paper. All, all of it was gone. And I saw this one lady, and she had, she had four little packages of toilet paper in her cart. And she was try she was walking through the store like she just stole something. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't think she was planning on running out with it, but she was like, she's like, nobody tackle me and take my toilet paper. And, and and really, I mean, that's the kind of spirit of of fear and craziness that that we have going on. And I really do. I, I don't understand the connection between toilet paper and a disease. I, there's a lot of things that make sense. I, I, I went, I tried to buy a whole bunch of hand sanitizer. They're out of hand sanitizer too, don't bother. But I tried, this was gone, right? Okay, this makes sense. I can understand why we would run out of this. <laughs> okay? But if you're going on a 14 day quarantine and, and you need six cases of toilet paper. You probably had a problem before the quarantine. Okay? This, this makes sense. The toilet paper has got me baffled. Now, the reality is, okay, that, that diseases have spread throughout the world since the beginning of time. And yes, there's been some bad ones out there. There's been some bad ones. Wiped out millions. There, there's been some bad ones. Okay, but the reality is that the numbers that we're seeing are not as scary as a lot of them that have that have been out in the past. But right now, there is a spirit of fear that is coming upon people and it's making them do irrational things. And I want to tell you guys, this is our opportunity to be salt and light. I'm going to be preaching on salt next week, and so I'm not going to steal all that. But what I want to share with you today, and I hope that you'll take this with you, is that people are watching. They see what you're doing. They see how you're acting. And when they see you out and about with confidence, with boldness, acting kindly, maybe... When you see somebody that's got a cart with no toilet paper and you have an extra roll in your basket, you just toss it in. Find a way to use this to prosper the kingdom of God. Okay? Now next week, God willing, okay, and I can get some toilet paper, I'm going to put on Facebook, come to church, get a roll of toilet paper. 
I, I'm, I'm just wondering if that might be. I don't care. I'll use that. I will use that for the kingdom. I am not beyond using that for Jesus. Oh, no, I told him that we had toilet paper, not to worry. You know, I don't want people going, coming to church and not, not, I mean, not coming to church because they're afraid we're out of toilet paper, you know. But yeah, I don't care. Like, I seriously, like, we gotta, we have to, we have to find and ask and pray, God, how do I leverage what's going on in the world for your kingdom this week? How do I leverage what's going on in the world? Because God, you have a message of hope. You have a message of purpose. You have a message that says it doesn't matter if you're alone, you feel unloved. God loves you. He cares for you. He's going to provide for you. He's going to watch over you. He's going to protect you. And I want to pray for you so that you can have that same hope that I have. Amen? I pray that when you leave this place today, or for those that you, of you that are watching at home, I pray that after you have been in this prayer meeting, you've been in this time of worship, you've been around the Word of God, I pray that you would be so full of boldness that you couldn't help but cast your nets. Because I believe that, that this is the time. This is the time. God is, is, is setting you up for victory in your children's lives. He's setting you up for victory at work. He's setting you up for victory in the schools, if, should schools stay open. Right? Now, what does that mean? When we think about this, you know, we're always trying to balance faith and, and wisdom. Right? We're a people of faith. And if I believe that God is going to protect me and that God is going to cover me with his wings and I don't have to worry about all of this chaos that's going on in the world, I don't have to worry about this sickness, okay? Does that mean that I can just be reckless? Does that mean that I don't do the right things because it's the right thing to do for my community? It doesn't mean that just because I have faith it doesn't mean that I should go around shaking everybody's hands and coughing in their face. Okay, because that's not cool. That's not wisdom. Right? Wisdom says, do the right thing. Follow the recommendations of the doctors. Follow the recommendations. If you're sick, stay home. Wisdom says, don't shake people's hands. Use hand sanitizer. Wash your hands regularly. Okay, wisdom says all these things. And I serve a God of wisdom. All right? So there may come a time when we're being told that the best thing to do is not to hold services because people might cross-contaminate. Well, guess what? That's okay. That's okay. And you know what? We might not. And what that means is you might be home watching the service from your cell phone or on your smart TV or, or live streaming it on your computer and worshiping like some of us are at home. And that's okay. That's using wisdom. And so we're going to begin to make some provisions to use wisdom and share the gospel and, and, and do things that are, that are not, uh, not silly because we want people to feel safe and comfortable. We don't take for granted, in other words, God's protection or his provision. We don't take for granted those things. We use wisdom. Here's the balance, right? Is we do both. We trust God and we are able to walk confidently in our faith and we use wisdom because God God gave us that too. Right? Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Now, there's a little bit more here. You know what? Actually, let's turn to Timothy. I want to share a little bit more about the spirit 
that God gives us and I'm going to close with this Second Timothy chapter one. Sorry, I turned there and just didn't give you a reference. Um, let's start in verse six. This is good. Verse six says, "For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity." but of power, of love, and of self-discipline. There's two things here. Verse 6 is awesome. I, I, I love verse 6. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It's, it's our youth group uh, theme verse or, or whatever you want to call it, motto. But it talks about fanning into flame the gift of God that's in you. That gift of God is the Holy Spirit. That gift of God is the Holy Spirit. And I got to tell you, I can't do without that gift. I can't do without it. And, and, and if I don't put it into practice, I get rusty with it. You know, have you ever, uh, you ever seen one of those yard trucks, you know, that people use just to plow their yard? They won't pass inspection. You don't drive them on the road. They, they just kind of sit in your yard, right? And then when it snows, you hope it starts, and then you plow your yard, all right? Well, a lot of times when you start that puppy up, if it starts, okay, you, you can feel the brakes are half seized. You can feel that there are certain things that don't want to move, all right? Well, let me tell you something. If you don't use the Holy Spirit in your life, okay? If you go about this life in your own power, okay? If you don't welcome him into your car when you get in and take him with you wherever you go, the Holy Spirit, is it, it gets like rusty on you. And then you go to start it up and, and the Holy Spirit's like, oh, you want me now? The same as that old truck. And so what I want to challenge you guys to do is to begin to stir up the gift of God that is in you. Use it regularly. Begin to pray in the Spirit every day if you're not already. I know many of you do. Begin to ask the Holy Spirit to go with you wherever you're going. Put a sticky note on your steering wheel that says, Holy Spirit, come and be with me in the car. Why? Because then when you get out of the car, the Holy Spirit goes with you, and you might hear things, see things, and be able to do things that you couldn't do otherwise. This is the time for this. Now, I love the fact that this is paired with that scripture that says, God didn't give you a spirit of fear or a timidity, timidity depending on your version. He pairs it with us because he wants us to know that that spirit, that gift, is a powerful gift. And that when we take it with us, when we stir it up, it's like saying, God, I am ready to be used for you. God, I'm ready for that spirit to be stirred in me so that when I go places, I'm ready to be used in you. And so I want to challenge you guys in these things. We don't have to operate in a spirit of fear because God has given us a spirit of power. Right? We don't have to operate in a spirit of fear because God has given us a spirit of power. Number one. Number two, we need to stir that up and keep it stirred. Don't let yourself get rusty because Sometimes if you don't run that truck, 
all year long and you go to start it up, it just doesn't do what you want it to do when you need it to. You want to have power in your life when you need it, when you, the people around you need it. Right. Amen? And two, I want you to go forth in boldness. You need to go forth in boldness. God did something today. He did something today in our nation. He's done something today in our community. He's done something today in our families. Mel, I love the word that you had about the prodigals. It's excellent. You might want to call your kids today. Seriously. You might want to call your kids today. This is an opportune time. This is an opportune time. Let's pray. And we're going to close. We're going to we'll close up a little bit early. But I, uh, I just really feel like, you know, if you're here today and, uh, and you're ready to move just in boldness, you're ready to, you want to stir up that gift that's in you and get ready to move in boldness. I want you to just kind of stand up. Will you do that? Just stand up right where you're at. If you want God to use you, I want to pray over you. Because I believe this is an appointed time. This is a chosen season that you're in. Tammy, I know you can't stand up, but I know you're standing up in your spirit. Praise God. Lord, Father, as we close out today, Father, both here in, in this building and out and on Facebook Live, everybody within the sound of my voice that's standing, Father God, I pray right now that the gift of God would be stirred in your people, that it would be stirred up in a powerful way. Father God, that you would break off any old rust and crust and uh, all those things that might make us uh, to just feel like we're not ready to move when, God, you speak. And I pray, Father God, that you would fully empower your people. Father, baptize people in the Holy Ghost and fire today. Father, those that haven't been filled, I pray right now you would baptize them in Holy Spirit and fire. And I pray, Lord God, that as we move forward as a people, God, that we would shed that spirit of fear. And God, that we would move forward in a spirit of boldness. And God, we thank you that you are able to do above and beyond what we could ever ask or dream. So, Father, I look forward to the praise reports of prodigal sons and daughters, father of grandchildren, father of children, coming back to you, Lord, in droves. Father, I look forward to the day where we, can't, we don't have enough seats to house the people that have come to know you. God, I look forward to the problems that that brings. And I just thank you, Lord God for what you're going to do. And I ask God that you would bless this people, bless this nation one more time. God, bless this area. Father, pour out your spirit on all the churches. And we thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next week one way or another. <laughs>